So good morning. Here we go for stage four of the tour. Picking up the stage at the Sprint Point, the uh, competition in the green jersey in Lerouville. Sorry, my French is not ideal. Um, so the green jersey is a jersey that was established in the 50s, so the spinners would have a chance to win something because given all the mountains in the tour, the... Um, Spinners are notorious for not climbing well. Although this particular rider that I'm drawing right now, Peter Sagan, is a fairly decent climber, not win the Tour de France level of climbing, but still a good climber. So they have just come through the sprint point um, and Sagan was bested by the gentleman I'm about to draw right now, Cobrelli. Actually, he was beat by a couple of guys, but you know he's got a good solid lead in this competition. Cobrelli is in third, but there are points at the sprint and at the finish. Every single stage, with the exception of the time trials. So you need to be attentive and build points whenever you can. So I'm real curious what uh, <laughs> Sagan and Cobrelli are talking about, and for that matter, what language they're using. Sagan is a Slovakian. Behind him in the white jersey is the current leader in the young Riders competition, and I'm sorry I'm forgetting his name at this moment. And just back here is Michael Matthews riding for Sunweb. Also mixed it up, I believe, took third in this sprint, Sagan taking fourth, but it should be noted that. While they took those positions in the sprint, there were three riders up the road who took the first three pieces. Now I am working down in my, my living room and you can hear my wife in the kitchen doing a little, uh, little bit of work in the kitchen, cleaning up some dishes, you know. Life does go on even during the tour. Sometimes it's a little difficult trying to manage both the life and painting the tour because it is a 21 day race over 23 days. And this does take a bit of time between the painting and the watching and everything else. So. <laughs> so just laying in the background now so as I do this work it's again I watch and find an interesting moment to paint that tells the story of the race and is in visually interesting all of those criteria something I hope you all will be interested in, both as fans of art and fans of bike racing. So. I think we'll call this po post sprint chat. So, and I know I've said it before, but as soon as I finish the line work, I'll start laying in the color and always work light to dark. And I see another rider I want to stick in here. But also work warm to cool. Warm colors are those you would associate with fire, so 
yellows, reds, oranges. And since I don't see any bright yellow, let's start with the flesh tone. That has the other added advantage of helping to figure out exactly where the figures are. working through faces, arms, and clearly partly, you know, I'm not trying to do portraits here. And these are ultimately intriguing, interesting images, I hope, that tell the story of the race, but they're not portraits. I'm not going for that, nor would there be enough It would, just wouldn't be possible to get that level of detail and the quickness that it would require to paint every stage of the race. So it's a concession to the necessities of what I'm doing, the time factor, but it's also the way I make art. If you go to my website, gregleach.com, and look at the non-cycling imagery, you will see that... Um, so. We have a couple of house cats, and I don't know if you can hear my wife out there calling to the kittens. So, well, when I say house cats, they're outdoor cats that we've been feeding. <laughs> so now we're laying in the reds. since we have laid in the flesh tones. And of course, every team naturally has its own kit with its own set of colors. So, laying those in. And then like I say, so Sagan is in the green jersey. He has switched his normal silver helmet for a green helmet to go with his. And Sagan has won this jersey six times already in Paris. If he does it this year, it'll be a new record. So he came, I'm sure, bringing a green helmet with him with every intention. wearing this jersey again. So. So now, we'll start laying in the background greens, the trees and such. Just picking up a little of the dark green. That's a little less brilliant as those two I just laid in. There's a little bit of muted yellow. This yellow is just a touch um, browns. I'm sorry, I'm being distracted by the kitten calling. I apologize. And mildly frustrated. son talks about uh, <laughs> he's real curious what the neighborhood kids will think years hence about the lady who goes out and calls kitten all day long every day <laughs> it's kind of funny actually when I think about it. so laying these trees in the background we also have a deep background of trees and the uh, fields behind the small town. So I think I'll lay in the town colors next. Trying to just to get the right color here. For the ruse. Roops. Ruffs. <laughs> Most of France, the ruse are the um, terracotta tiles. So 
the trees along the side of the road. one of the banners in the background here. It's just laying in some blues now, again working through those cool colors. Oops, mixed another color of blue. darkest blue of Merida's kit, her little blue stripe here, Bahrain Merida. Actually her shorts are a pretty dark, almost black blue. go back to the other building colors. A little bit of orange, leaving my brush a little dirty. Actually, I'm going to pick up some more dirt. And then we need the grass here. Along the side of the road as the riders come through town. So I do jump back occasionally, back into the other colors. You know, you can't. It's one of the nice things about making art is there are some prescribed rules. And I'm talking about some of the prescribed rules, but the other thing about art is, you know, and artists for that matter, is we like to break rules. We like to do it the way we want to do it what works for the painting, what works for the piece you're doing, that's what's most important. I think I've said it before, but one thing as an artist you need to remember is that the viewer is never going to see your source material. You're not seeing right now what I'm painting from. So I'm building a black right now is what I'm doing. I like to use a chromatic black, something that isn't just straight out of the tube, it makes a more interesting image, a more attractive painting. I, I feel like the blacks that come with watercolor sets tend to eat a hole in the uh, artwork. They're just so dark and they're not chromatic. They're not built of a color. So this is really a muted purple almost, and it's far more attractive to look at than if I just used a non-color based dark. I'm just about finished here, I need to lay the roadway and the sky in. So the roadway I usually, depending on the road surface, now with cement of course this wouldn't work, but macadam is I'm taking a fair amount of blue into that dark, the quote unquote black, and laying that in, but I'm using a fair amount of water. And you can see I just, I'm getting a puddle here, so I'm gonna get some of the water out of my brush and then drag that out so I get rid of the puddle and then hit it on the napkin. There's a sign here that's too bright of a white, so I'm just gonna, again, use the dirty brush Use a dirty brush for shadows on these white kits, white jerseys. And then it's just the sky. So all this work is available, all my Tour de France work, 
is available for purchase, and you can read more about the race and the artwork at theartofcycling.blogspot.com. I'll add that. I hope you'll give a like to the work. And also you can see and you can see the um, everything that's happened thus far and you can purchase the work as well. There will be direct links on each blog post to each painting. Also I would hope that you would subscribe and you know become a regular viewer of these paintings. I'll be doing them every day at the tour. And also please give a thumbs up. You know, if you like it, please let everyone else know. Thank you so much.